And now there's something very interesting happen road-wise, because uh, we are, in, as I said, in Hamburg here today, and the so-called Sirichstraße is actually Europe's only one-way road, which has a special feature. And it switches the direction of the one-way depending on the time. Here, once again, the sign says, is it, are we wrong? Are we, we are right, right? We are right. 12 to 4. Yeah, 12 to 4 is like, it's closed, so yeah. it's like in half an hour, we're not allowed to drive here, right? So, yeah. so now it's like quarter past 11. <laughs> okay, welcome to Germany. We have a nice set of vehicles here for you today with an interesting comparison of the Volvo XC40 versus Volvo C40, Volvo's compact SUV EVs. And not only the comparison between these, but also front-wheel drive versus all-wheel drive, low trim versus high trim, small battery versus big battery. All of that to come here on Auto Fuel with Thomas. Let's start with the XC40 here in the front. The EV version has the closed front grille in the striking red color. But soon, with a model year upgrade to come, it will look the very same like the C40 from the front. So both models will not be differentiated by the front design anymore soon. You can see here, this design is even cleaner and will also define future Volvo models to come. The C40 is only available as the all-electric version. The lights, you can see here the Thor's Hammer LED signature and these here also the so-called pixel LED lights. This is a matrix option that is to come for the XC40 soon as well. 4 meters 43 or 174 inches is the length, both the same. The difference is indeed here the roof line. The XC40 continues it in a typical SUV shape, whereas the C40 falls down, looks a little bit sexier definitely and this is indeed also better as for the wind efficiency for the resistance yeah but it's not that it would be a huge range difference as for that but definitely and also here in that white color here the c40 really looks striking doesn't it wheels by the way further down below in the us and uk you always get to 20 inch in germany we could also get 19 inch you know yeah We Germans, we like to do understatement from time to time. <laughs> Maybe you've seen it here. They use disc brakes also in the rear. We've recently seen EVs with drum brakes in the rear a lot of the time. Here, these are the 19-inch wheels. There you can see the difference. 19 here and 20 on the other one, of course. Look a little bit more impressive. However, comfort-wise, always try to go for the smallest ones. In the rear, it's interesting to play with these light signatures here, the vertical one in the XC40. And since you have here this rather flat window, they had to do something differently here. And they wanted to create the longest LED strip in the Volvo ever. But then again, this piece wasn't available all, you know, as one. So they had to make a cut here. And then there is this gap. And then they say, ah, it looked maybe weird when there's just this gap and then this is the stripe. So they want to have a continuing gap folder. And this is the reason why they came up with this idea. Here, once again, also with this small spoiler lip, it just looks a little bit more striking, the C40. But will it also have a downside on the interior? We'll soon find out. And here, when it's a little bit darker, you can see how this rear lamp here builds up. Pretty cool effect, right? It looks really amazing. Also, when I close the vehicle, yeah, there we go. And the turning indicators, well, not that spectacular in comparison. Here with the XC40, you can see it looks a little bit different. And in the front, the turning indicators replace the front daytime running light each. Pretty nice. And difference, front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive is, of course, also top speed and the acceleration figures. Top speed, 180 kilometers an hour or 112 miles per hour versus 160 kilometers an hour or 100 miles an hour. So little difference then. Acceleration figure, this is more significant, whereas the all-wheel drive model is less than five seconds in the acceleration figure. The front-wheel drive model is more than seven seconds, so two and a half seconds difference. And interestingly, the C40 is 0.2 seconds quicker than the XC40. As for batteries, 75 kilowatt hours net for the big one, 67 kilowatt hours net for the small one. Just an eight kilowatt hours gap. That's it actually a pretty small gap but then again since with the small battery I get the front wheel drive and with the big battery the all-wheel drive two electric motors there is in the price difference of 7,500 euros and then it might be a budgetary wise decision to go for the smaller one well range wise it's very interesting 
on the one hand you have less capacity of the battery but then again one electric motor only is more efficient in the driving and the maximum range estimate well we've tested these vehicles in summertime already maximum 400 kilometers or 250 miles in good conditions here now with very low temperatures rather than something 350 kilometers 220 miles but we'll see how it goes today front-wheel drive small battery versus all-wheel drive big battery later on then our concise figures for today charging 11 kilowatt AC 150 kilowatt max DC but the charging curve does fall quite quickly so you are at about 37 minutes when you charge from 10 to 80 percent state of charge well is there Frank yes there is here for example the spot for the charging cable as for the trunk or boot comparison 419 liters versus 413 so here six liters more but the reason is they are measuring that below this cover always so below the cover there's hardly any difference and you can see you can very well fit your luggage in here this is a separate splitter here you can have your cha ca charging cable here or you can also um, put this one up I can show that the other vehicle is very practical thing so you see the normal impression is actually quite the same because here with C40 let's open that the only thing you lose here besides the six liter is the area up here because even this area here has the same height it's just the area up there that you lose a little bit the normal length here is 90 centimeters or 35 inches the total length is at 1 meters 70 or 66 inches around that and here I can also show you what I meant with putting this one up for example when you want to put a backpack upright in here this is a practical splitting solution car key and door closing sound very solid like that now we show you the low trim level first you can get it both for the XC40 and also in future for the C40 but here also in low trim level you have soft touch here that's quite cool then you can get a dark felt here and they also use a lot of recycling share in this vehicle already so really make it more sustainable for the whole journey basically and in the low trim level you start with a plain black fabric seats but they are also very breathable in summertime that is the advantage of them and it's just you know rather simple and you can also try to keep the price down a little bit more and then here some things I want to show you first of all you can also get a blue felt inside here so if you want it a little bit more colorful the orange is gladly gone now and the C40 already comes here with this you know structured elements right there it's also backlit pretty cool and here in the higher trim you can also go for these different bolsters so this is called Microtech so it's a leather red it feels really soft and really premium but it's animal free completely and also here the inside is then covered with microfiber with the product upgrades you will also be able to select a full microtech seat so this material here all over the seat if you want to wipe it clean easier and also a rather bright seat then but then with wool share so now directly hop from one seat to another and yeah the surface here with the microfiber where I'm sitting on it now when you feel it with your hands it's of course more sophisticated more premium and then the leatherette has a cool clean look and so on but to me you know it's rather about looks because when you sit on the seat there is not much comfort difference so it's more about you know look and feel and so on and I would say in winter time the microfiber might be a little bit cozier in summertime the fabric might be a little bit you know more breathable so I would say when you want to spend the money and you're living in a rather cold climate and you like this cool you know sophisticated thing then you go for the microfiber other than that you can also stay with the fabric and here in the rear also soft touch at the inside of the door so the build quality we see here I'm really satisfied with that and once again this micro this leather red material they have here it has a very very interesting surface yeah it's really fun to to cuddle it a little bit <laughs> but here in the rear then also with the blue floor mats here I think the styling is pretty cool and the thing is here when you have bright light white floor mats like with the EQS recently it's a catastrophe but here with a you know bluish color you don't see dirt on it that quickly so here now headroom this is the one with the panoramic roof but the C40 here has a fixed panoramic roof you can see you cannot open it and when I put my spine up then I do hit my head at the ceiling with 186 or 6 foot 1 if I'm a little bit more relaxed it works 
So that's the only catch with the C40. You lose a little bit of headroom. Here, as for the knee room, when I'm with a tall driver in the front, it does exactly fit. It's not the longest vehicle. It's not a purpose-built EV platform yet. I think it's okay. However, you do have that huge middle tunnel here. You can very well see due to the blue contrasting color right here, huge middle tunnel. That's also one drawback. And here the XC40, first of all, I can put my spine up and do not hit the ceiling with my head. So a little bit more headroom here, that's the advantage. So when you have Michael Jordan kits in the rear, better go for the XC40. If you want cool looks on the outside, no kits, then the C40 it is. <laughs> and here, also difference, you have the panoramic roof, which you can also open. It doesn't look that cool then, because you have that split bar in here, but then you can also open it and leave some fresh air in. And you also have then the cover for really hot summer days. Well, and fun fact, I want to show you how to close the panoramic roof cover now, or maybe how to open it here, but I'm sitting here in the rear now. But then again, here in the front, I cannot control anything because the car has this sensor in the seat if a driver is present. So that I can activate the car, I now do this. I activate the sensor now and then <laughs> I can open the roof or uh, close the cover and so on. So this way here, open the panoramic roof like this. Um, it, there's this strange slider here in the front, by the way. So this is more complicated than with real buttons. Hashtag capacitive BS. So in this way, then you slide forward then there. We have no feeling for it. But then here with this with this shade. But it's very interesting with the sensor. So um, obviously you just need like one present. Ah, there's a driver present. <laughs> Clean Scandinavian layout for the cockpit. Soft touch here. And then you have these, you know, these structured inlets here. Very beautiful. Nine inch vertical screen. We know it from older Volvos, but there's of course the different software here here at the moment with the 360 degree view. Steering wheel cover also now animal free so there's no animal leather in this vehicle whatsoever and also real buttons on the steering wheel. That's also good here for example left side for the cruise control. Soon more to the instruments and here one big button here definitely still for the volume control. That's good to have. Temperature control however you have to do then here in the screen or use the voice input. Set the temperature to 22 degrees. Okay, changing the temperature to 22 degrees. That took a while and is also a proof of concept that I think you should still have manual climate knobs. Lower console, either USB C charger or inductive charging mat underneath. Oh, they're schmoozy. And then adaptive cup holders right here and then you have this little red cover and can fold up for a lot more space underneath actually. That's quite nice. Now this 9 inch infotainment system, Android Automotive base, that's of course pretty cool. Here the lower part, temperature control, so yeah not too easy to control, very small also. Here heated seats, heated steering wheel, then you either have this main view or this app view, so this available but the main menu is usually enough. The maps here it's actually pretty cool. So very responsive, really fast, and you can always use the good voice activation. Mercedes, Audi, and BMW have paid billions for the entertainment systems, and they're worse than this. And Volvo just says, "Excuse me, Mr. Google, can you do me the entertainment system?" And there it is. And I will save your phones from getting activated now. Hey, famous search engine, drive me to Frankfurt. I cheated a little Navigating bit and press the button. So that went pretty quick. And when you want the optimum charging stops on the route, you hit it here, add charging stops, and then you have the suggestions like when should you charge on the route. This is of course a very long route than here for an electric vehicle with the range like this. So responsive, good map guidance, great voice input. That's all you need. Hey, but what about Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, the smartphone connectivity? And without it, they say, well, it's an Android system, you don't need it. And Apple CarPlay is to come, but we don't know yet where. It's been due for a long time. Here the instruments, very clear to read. I like them. You can either have them like this, simplified, or then the map full screen. That's pretty cool. The only thing I don't like is you only have battery state of charge here on the lower end and never kilometers or miles, unless you go on very, very low battery status, then it switches. But you cannot switch it yourself, and I think that's a mistake. 
By the way, here, sound system by Harman Kardon is an optional one and has to me a very rich, true sound. I also like the Harman Kardon sound systems in the BMWs and at Mercedes, of course, the Burmester sound system. So at the moment, these two are to me among the best. Yeah, beautiful. Synchro, eins, zwei, drei. Ah. <lacht> Jetzt nur, nur Sommer alle Woche. Welcome to Thomas' Driving Lounge here. Starting with the XC40 front wheel drive. However, we just happen to have the XC40 as front wheel drive today. So you can also say the same about the C40 then with front wheel drive. So now we're going to investigate what about front wheel drive versus all wheel drive. And also, is there a difference between XC40 and C40 in driving? Do you need more power and do you need the bigger battery actually? Here from a traffic light. 50. So, of course, you don't have the biggest punch. The steering wheel does give you some feedback because you just have the front wheel drive, but you see it's actually reasonably quick. So, for city driving, the front wheel drive is definitely fast enough. We'll soon also head out to the motorway and see if there is then something like, ah, you know, we need more power or something. But for city driving, definitely more than enough. In general, about this vehicle, it feels great as a city vehicle, low center of gravity because of the battery pack. Steering input here is really good, feels precise and also natural. Here I have a map guidance set at the moment, center screen. And I also have it full screen here on the instruments, so very well to read. And of course, the Google Maps guidance is really good. Oh, there's a squirrel across the road. Therefore, we always need to pay attention to the road, of course, and not always look at the camera. So, therefore, I'm not watching at the camera too often, actually, due to scrolls, definitely. Yeah. And maybe also humans. <laughs> so here now, it's a little bit, yeah, it's a lot of fun. So also when you compare like combustion engine versions from the XC40 to this one here, the EV version is clearly the most fun to drive. It's spontaneous in the acceleration, it has a better center of gravity, although it is heavier as for the weight, it's just more fun to drive. Suspension is actually a good compromise. We've had recently a lot of EVs where the suspension is just too rough, too stiff. Worst in the Tesla Model 3 and in the Model Y, super, super stiff. But even in the Ionic 5 and in the Kia EV6, the suspensions are just so stiff. Here in the XC40 EV, it is stiffer than in the combustion engine versions, um, also to cope with that increased weight and so on. However, I think here it's still a good compromise. If you are in a market which allows the 19-inch wheels, I would go with them because 20-inch wheels, of course, always cost you a little bit of comfort. But considering there are 20-inch wheels here underneath this vehicle, beautiful area of Hamburg with a lot of old villas and so on, by the way. So um, yeah, try to go with 19 inch if you can actually pick them. So the whole driving feeling of this vehicle is really flawless. You can use it very well in city, but also long term, the Volvo seats have great ergonomics. And I'm feeling more comfortable on these seats here than recently with the Mercedes EQS, because the ergonomics that Volvo is using is just better, you know? Now, no matter also which uh, surface you have, the base seat, you know, like the construction of the seat is just very, very good. That's one thing that I really love about the Volvo vehicles. Oh, that was interesting. That was the, the um, emergency braking assist that was kind of starting because there was someone coming from the right. Um, I did feel something, you know, like a warning in, in, in the steering also, but didn't like really uh, start to brake fully. But yeah, they have packed it all full of assistance systems, definitely. You also have the cruise control right here, either set as a speed limiter or a cruise control, and then also depending on the, on the trim level. And you can also get a blind spot monitor, which is also built in here. So, uh, and so far, all the system systems, when you have the adaptive cruise control and so on, they are working very flawlessly. And now there's something very interesting happened road-wise, because uh, we are, in, as I said, in Hamburg here today, and the so-called Zierichstraße 
is actually Europe's only one-way road which has a special feature and it switches the direction of the one-way depending on the time. And you can see here, I'm not sure if you can see it on camera, but I can, on the left, I could not go left at this moment. This is like an adaptive sign. And when I would go left, I would, you know, be against the law. And it says between, um, you know, four and 12, there's the, like a ch changing point. And now I'm actually going in the proper direction. And it can be really funny when you, for example, park at the side of the road here, it says like, yeah, it's a block from 12 to four. Um, so, yeah, that's, you really have to think about this, you know? Here, once again, the sign says, is, from, wait a minute, from, are we wrong? Or are we, we are right, right? We are right. 12 to 4. Yeah, 12 to 4 is like, it's closed. Yeah. So it's like, in half an hour, we're not allowed to drive here, right? So, yeah. so now it's like quarter past 11, but in half an hour, we would be breaking the law if we would go the same way now. That's interesting. And then, yeah. I mean, it must be crazy when you're living in the street, right? And then, uh, so they, they, they say there's like a rule. So when you park next to here, like right along the street, you might be facing the wrong direction. And they don't want people to, you know, turn all the way, all day on the street. So then it's allowed to drive a little way, like a little piece in the wrong direction, even at that time, and then turn at the next intersection. <laughs> okay. Welcome to Germany. And now motorway acceleration 80 to 120 kilometers an hour with the front wheel drive. Oh, that's it. Still reasonable, still a nice punch. And then it would start to get, you know, a little bit slower. It's very windy outside today, therefore maybe like you know, there's a lot of wind noise, more than usual, it would, usually would be. Noise insulation in general is actually quite decent in this vehicle, just at really, really high speeds, but it's also not meant to be, you know. Here at 120 kilometers an hour, this is here um, like a current electric. You got that? A current electric consumption? Yes, thank you, sir. thank you so much. <laughs> and here. <laughs> It's funny, okay, yeah. <laughs> Here we have, <laughs> have around 35 kilowatt hours per mile kilometers. Um, so you see here on motorway, consumption goes up quite quickly. In general, in city traffic so far, we more more at, you know, less than 20 kilowatt hours per mile kilometers. Um, but we see here, also due to the building form of the vehicle, it's not that aer aerodynamic. Indeed, motorway electric consumption is somewhat of a problem and that would mean that the range significantly drops then at these speeds. But with a mix of city traffic and some motorway at different speeds, we end up here at the moment at some 22 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers. That's 50 with the all-wheel drive version. Yeah, racing from traffic light to traffic light, of course, doesn't really make sense. That was just for testing purposes now. But you saw the difference. I mean, especially that difference, zero to 50. I mean, wow, huge difference. So this all-wheel drive version here has a lot more boost and punch. It's actually that <laughs> aggressive in the acceleration that it especially applies a lot of G-forces on the passengers. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Cornelius is still alive. Yeah, gladly. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you really have to be gentle with the, uh, with the pedal there. There's a big question, like, do we still call it throttle pedal then? Or shall we call it energy pedal then? Or just pedal? Maybe <laughs> different discussion next time. So one pedal driving feeling definitely here. You just use the pedal and that one pedal and that's it. So you have a strong recuperation as soon as you lift your foot off the throttle or the pedal. And uh, there's no you know, recuperation setting here also. On the one hand you can say, hey, that's beautiful here, Hamburg Alster. 
it does make things easy when you can't set anything and you just have to learn driving this one pedal driving because here now gently off the throttle that you can finally doze like when am I coming to a stop and you learn that quite quickly and it indeed also then comes here to a full stop and then when you also gently apply the throttle gently lift it again then your passengers can also live with that. I think they found a good setup here. Electric driving, EV driving is about the one pedal driving mainly. I think it's a good decision because safety thing, when you lift your foot off the throttle and then switch in that split second, you're already decelerating. That might be a safety factor indeed. It's of course not a safety factor if you recuperate too harsh all the time and someone hits you in the back or something. The brake light is being activated by the way. That's you know, really uh, um, uh, according to the deceleration moment you have. And since this is a harsh recuperation, when you really lift your foot, then the brake lights also appear. So indeed, the main difference then from the drive over drive is that really spontaneous power. You just have to be a little bit more gentle with that, definitely. With the front wheel drive model, you can more or less drive like with a combustion engine in a, you know same spec but here you basically have a performance car definitely you know and so you always know you have more than you could actually use yeah but the driving feeling itself is pretty much similar then besides of the acceleration and also since we are now here in the C40 is there any difference we could feel only when I look to the rear mirror, then I see, yeah, okay, the overview to the rear is a little bit worse than with the XC40. So that's one disadvantage. It's just a smaller window than there in the rear. I can still see to the rear, yes, but definitely the XC40 delivers a better overview. When we soon come to the motorway, we do another acceleration at higher speeds and also as for the energy consumption figure, now we have two biases in a different direction. First of all, I told you earlier, the aerodynamics of the C40 are a little bit better. Indeed, in the 0 to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour acceleration figure is 0.2 seconds advantage for the C40 because, especially in that area like 60 to 100, the aerodynamic effect already plays a role. That also means here in the city, doesn't matter. But when you're driving at motorway speeds, the C40 will be more efficient. However, in this spec here, we have the big battery, the small battery we just had in the, in the XC40 and also one electric motor more here. So we have a little bit more weight than here. So more weight can lead to a higher consumption. Then again, C40 low. So maybe the effect will be evened out, but the major thing is, this is the same platform, it's more or less the same vehicle. I don't expect too much difference, actually. The main difference will appear when you really use this power. So when you drive both vehicles, front wheel drive and all wheel drive, in the very same gentle way, you know, or in comparison to here, you do have the power available. When you then always like, what I did at the beginning, like, whew, 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 speed the vehicle from traffic light to traffic light or drive like big accelerations, super high speed in the motorway, then of course the consumption will be much higher. But let's see what we will score. Now motorway driving with the all-wheel drive C40 when we're already at speed, so 80 kilometers to 120 kilometers are same as before. Let's go. Oh, that's it. <laughs> okay, that's a massive difference. Wow. This is really a performance car. Yeah. It, I mean, it's two and a half seconds and said it's quicker in the initial acceleration, but here, even at higher speeds, it's still so much quicker. It really feels like a performance vehicle, no doubt. And even here, it's so quick. You can see that the front hood, you see it on camera actually? At the front, when I'm hitting the accelerator pedal, it's like a, like a G-class accelerating now because the weight is being shifted to the rear. And then we have that, uh, wow, super powerful acceleration. So if you're an acceleration friend, 
then this will give you so much more fun. And of course, when you're thinking in, you would drive even faster on the motorway, well, then of course, you still have more punch. Here at 120 kilometers an hour, still around, you know, 30 kilometer hours more in kilometers as for the consumption. Here now, cruise control. Let's set it here on the left side, still with real buttons. Good to have that definitely. And here now also the speed is being reduced immediately. Now we can also check out the blind spot monitor here on the right side. Let's see, should appear right now. There we go. You see this kind of you know red boomerang. It's a very nice integration. When you hit the turning indicator, then you even get a flashing warning, for example. Works of course both sides. So motorway-wise, all-wheel drive is definitely the way to go. And C40, XC40, I think it's really a thing of which passengers do you have in the back there? Do you need that extra trunk height above the cover? Yeah, but then efficiency, of course, when you drive a lot of motorway, will be better with the C40. But I think at the end of the day, it's more or less a question of design. And here the all-wheel drive consumption is very interesting. So around 24, 25 kilowatt hours and 100 kilometers. So that's almost 40 kilowatt hours on 100 miles. That means, yeah, around four kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers more than with the front-wheel drive with a small battery. Well, that means the concise range here today would be just over 300 kilometers and barely 200 miles at seven, eight degrees Celsius. So um, not that cold, but already quite cold. So you see here, this car does have a heat pump. And now from the new model years, it will also be standard from the lowest trim level that they have the heat pump. That's of course really good. However, indeed the Volvo XC40 and the C40, they are not the most efficient electric vehicles. That's the downside. Most other aspects we've seen here today, as for the driving fun and so on, really, really great. But the other competitors, some of them are really better as for the efficiency. As for front-wheel drive with small battery or all-wheel drive with a bigger battery, well, we did have higher consumption here with the all-wheel drive, so three to four kilowatt hours on one kilometers more. And that means that the range will be more or less the same, because on the one hand, you have smaller battery, but less consumption. On the other hand, bigger battery, but a little bit higher consumption. So this won't be the biggest effect then overall. Very interesting finding for today. Strong competitors, I think, definitely also the Kia EV6. Had a very good result in our test and also the Ford Mustang Mach-E. See you at these episodes if you haven't seen them so far.